Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome again to my YouTube channel, one of my videos. Uh, this time I want to read from a translation I did. This is the title, Ultimate Crush, Most of the University Rugby Leadership and Building the Strongest Winning Team in Japan. Um, there we are, and it's, it was translated by me, and it was written by Katsuyuki Kiyomiya. And this is the book um, which uh, I translated, the original Japanese. There's Kiyomiya-san on the front cover. Uh, Kyu Kyoku no Shori, Ultimate Crush. Uh, Kiyomiya Katsuyuki. Uh, and uh, there's something about leadership at the top. Sai Kyo no Soshiki to Leadership Ron. Okay, so um, there's nothing on the back, actually. All right, so um, I published this in 2006. I think the book, when did the book come out? For the original book. Uh, well, obviously before that, um, I bought it uh, from the university from my university's co-op. It says here on the twenty second of February two thousand and six, and I think it was pretty new at the time. So, okay, um, so this book is still available on Amazon.com as a paperback and a Kindle, and uh, also there's a hardcover version on lulu.com and also paperback on lulu.com um, and I think even an ebook on lulu.com anyway um, they may not be exactly exactly the same covers as these these are the very simple ones <clears throat> um, I did actually make some slightly more complicated ones so I'll put it as one of the photographs from the book on the front cover <clears throat> so here we go anyway um, ultimate crush Waseda University Rugby Leadership and Building the Strongest Winning Team in Japan by Katsuyuki Kiyomiya, Waseda University Rugby Coach, 2001 to 2006, translated by Ian Ruxton. Here we've got um, uh, Kiyomiya-san with uh, Katsuhiko Oku, who features strongly in this book. Uh, I'll just read what it says under there. Um, Rugby coach Katsuyuki Kiyomiya on the left and his Waseda University senior uh, senpai Katsuhiko Oku in England 2002, the inventor of the ultimate crush slogan and the tousle haired general who adopted it and made it a reality. And the next is Translators Forward, that's by me. A little bit of a play on words there uh, because I am a forward when I play rugby. Ha -ha. The three main purposes of this translation are as follows. First, to give an insight into the exciting realities of the vibrant domestic Japanese rugby scene, which have remained sadly and for far too long almost a closed book to the rest of the rugby world, mainly because of the formidable language barrier. Secondly, to show that rugby union at the top level in Japanese universities is coached by serious and professionally minded educators like Mr. Kiyomiya, Kiyomiya-san, and his great rival, Mr. Haruguchi, Haruguchi-san, who have original ideas and many notable and remarkable successes with them. And finally, to stimulate deeper thought and broader discussion about the nature of coaching and leadership, since the techniques introduced here can, it is felt, be effectively used not only in rugby outside Japan, but also in the wider world beyond rugby football, which is after all only one small, if significant part of that great field of human activity and endeavor, which we call life with a capital L. Acknowledgements. This book was first published in Japanese by Kodansha Company Limited in February 2006 as Kyu Kyoku no Shori, Ultimate Crush. The English translation would, of course, not have been possible without the kind consent of that company and of the author, Mr. Katsuyuki Kiyomiya, who has already written several books on several similar subjects. I first approached him by a letter of self-introduction dated March 20th, 2006, after I had obtained a copy of the book from my university's co-op. I explained that I was researching Anglo-Japanese relations, especially the diplomat Sir Ernest Sato, that I was a long-term, uh, at that time, 18 years resident of Japan, and very fond of Japanese rugby, that I felt one of the reasons why the Japan RFU had unfortunately failed in its bid to bring the Rugby World Cup 2011 to this country, was a lack of knowledge throughout the world of Japanese rugby from the inside, 
and that an English translation of his book might be a first step to remedying this. How persuasive these arguments were, I cannot say, but anyway, I'm very grateful for Kiyomiya-san's permission to undertake this project and for letting me tackle it, that's a pun, with only words of encouragement and the answer to occasional queries directed at him. I also wish to thank Hikita-san, webmaster of the Waslo University RFC homepage, for the photographs which are included in the tax text, and as always my wife for her unfailing support. Rugby in Japan, a very brief outline. Many Japanese are justly proud of their excellent rugby traditions and the fact that the number of players registered in Japan is the fourth highest in the world. Rugby union with its emphasis on teamwork strategy and fighting spirit is ideally suited to the culture of the land where the world famous and noble samurai tradition was born. Rugby for adults in Japan is like the Gaul that is modern day France described in the great Roman general Julius Caesar's De Bello Gallico about the Gallic Wars, divided into three parts, company-based teams, university teams, and club teams. The top league founded in 2003 with 12 teams is the semi-professional pinnacle of the pyramid. Well, it was at the time, okay. Uh, and from the 2006 season has been expanded to comprise the following 14 teams. Coca-Cola West Red Sparks, Fukuoka Sonics Blues, IBM Big Blue, alas, no longer, as also Coca-Cola is no longer. Kobe Kobelco Steelers, Kubota Spears, NEC Green Rockets, Rico Black Rams, Sanya Wild Knights, which is now Panasonic, um, uh, Saitama Panasonic Wild Knights, is it not? Sekom Ragats, I don't know what's happened to that team. Santori Sangalath, uh, now coached by Mr. Kiyomiya. Um, Toshiba Brave Lupus, Toyota Fab Blitz, World Fighting Bull, that, is, that team is no more, and Yamaha Jubilo, which has become Blue Revs uh, in this year, 2022. Below the top league, there are company leagues in the main rugby areas of Japan, Kanto, that is Tokyo, Kansai, Osaka, and Kyushu Island in West Japan. The top university teams are almost all in the Kanto area. In alphabetical order, they are Hosei, Kanto Gakuin, Keio, where rugby was first introduced by two Cambridge graduates, E.B. Clark and Ginnosuke Tanaka in 1899, Meiji, Teikyo, and Wasada. In the Kansai area, Doshisha is traditionally the strongest team, though Kyoto Sangyo, Osaka Taiku, that's physical education, and Ritsumeikan have also been strong in recent years. Kyushu has many of the best high school teams and also the brilliantly innovative and unique Sonics World Rugby Youth Tournament since 2000. Alas, it hasn't uh, happened for the past two years, and uh, this year I think will happen only with Japanese teams. Uh, but anyway, uh, since 2000, in which Japanese high schools take on schools from the rest of the world in a kind of mini World Cup. That's what Kiyomiya san described it as to me. But unfortunately for Kyushu, most of the best players head for the top universities in or near Tokyo on graduation. This ingrained tradition seems unlikely to change in the near future. In this context, the painful but unavoidable expulsion of club members described in chapter five excites a mild twinge of regret mixed with envy because if 16 members were expelled from my university's rugby club in Kyushu, it would only have six or seven left. It can only be hoped that even though they were not good enough to stay in the club, they were not all lost to rugby forever. As the author points out in the postscript, Japan's rugby population overall is decreasing and he wants to help put a stop to that. It was at the time, um, I'm not sure quite what the situation is currently. I think it's a bit better, um, <clears throat> fortunately. On a brighter note, two Kyushu based teams are in the top league from 2006 for the first time. Fukuoka Sonics Blues and newcomer Coca-Cola West Red Sparks, uh, no more, uh, which under former Japan coach Shogo Mukai has won promotion. The emblem of the Kyushu RFU includes a smoldering volcano, mighty Mount Aso, and it may well erupt into life again soon. In times gone by, Yahata Steel of Northern Kyushu, Kita Kyushu since 1963, Kita Kyushu City is, is where I live, dominated the amateur rugby club scene, um, amateur company, I'm sorry, company rugby scene in Japan, winning a record 12 championships between 1951 and 1966. 
The rugby scene has, here has been relatively quiet since then, but the red hot molten streams are flowing again at last, uh, speaking from Kyushu and writing from Kyushu at the time. Um, <clears throat> rugby at Waseda, Waseda University Rugby Football Club, founded in 1918, is part of the elite, the creme de la creme of Japanese rugby. Among its past coaches, there are two outstanding men, Professor Tetsunosuke Onishi, often described as the Japanese embodiment of the legendary Carwin James, who as coach of the national team from 1966 to 1971, beat the junior All Blacks in 1968, in New Zealand, I should add, and so nearly defeated England 3-6 in Tokyo in 1971. And top banking official Hiroaki Shukuzawa, who sadly passed away this year, that was 2006, but who created the top league and as Japan's coach from 1989 to 1991, guided the country to its only Rugby World Cup victory so far, a convincing 52-8 win against Zimbabwe in Belfast in 1991. That was uh, the era of Hirao and Boyagi um, and other great players. <clears throat> It is from this important school and rugby powerhouse that Mr. Kiyomiya hails, and there are many in Japan, including the translator, who earnestly hope and believe that he will one day follow his distinguished se seniors, senpai, down the same road to coach the national team, the brave blossoms to even greater glory. Well, it hasn't happened, unfortunately, um, but uh, currently Jamie Joseph is doing a pretty good job, uh, I think we have to say. As I write this, uh, Japan is languishing at 20th place in the IRB world rankings, which is far below its potential, so the sooner the better. Well, now I think it's about 12th or maybe even higher. He could certainly coach a professional team outside Japan also if he wanted to, but he hasn't done so. Um, the importance of slogans. In the course of preparing this book, I discovered that the English word slogan is in fact an import from the Gaelic language. In the 16th century, the word slogan was used to mean a battle cry or similar, S-L-O-G-O-R-N. The mental picture of Scottish Highland clans preparing for battle and rallying their troops for the fray by shouting accepted phrases to represent their group is a powerful one. And the ultimate crush slogan invented by a Waseda and Oxford man, but in the city of Cambridge, has clearly attained its own momentum and high position in Waseda rugby folklore to say nothing of other Japanese sports. The Suntory Sun Goliath slogan for the 2006 season is ALIVE in uh, capital letters, which also holds out exciting possibilities and is a strong pointer to the players about how they should play. Other team slogans include once again to the pinnacle, restart, Toshiba Brave Lupus, we can change NEC Green Rockets, support and communication, World Fighting Bull, Seize the day, Sekom Ragats, Line Pride, in capital letters, that's Yamaha, Fight On, also capital letters, Kubota Spears, Always Attack and Aggressive, Coca-Cola West Red Sparks. TAFU, which is Team Aggression Faith Unity, Rico Black Rams, Adaptability, Sanyo Wild Knights, Keep On Running, Fukuoka Sonics Blues, Reach Higher, IBM Big Blue, beat Toshiba, Kobelko Steelers. The top league will be keenly contested again this year as these slogans suggest. Learning from mistakes. It is a fundamental axiom of education that people can and should learn from their mistakes. And a good teacher should indicate, preferably in a gentle way, what those mistakes are and how to correct them. Watching Waseda play on television over the years, I can say that they make few mistakes in their games, and their rapid recovery when errors do occur is a sign of their overall strength. Good teams will test their opponents in various ways, creating pressure to force errors, and Waseda also has the capability to do this. Mr. Kiyomiya's coaching record over the past five years, 2001 to six, is outstanding, with very few defeats. Played 70, 162, drawn one, lost seven. See Appendix 1 for details. His notable scalps include Oxford, Cambridge, and New Zealand universities. He won the best of five championships contest with the Kanto Gakuin coach, Mr. Haraguchi, 3-2, and restored pride and passion to Waseda rugby and hope to its supporters who had endured a long slump. 
in his final season as coach, all 12 games up to and including the university championship final were won. Then on February the 12th, 2006, Waseda defeated Toyota Furblitz in the All Japan Championship 28 to 24, avenging the defeat of the year before. This was a historic triumph because it was the first time that a university team had beaten a top league team. The current All Black Troy Flavel was on the losing side that day and in August 2005, Toyota had beaten Newcastle Falcons. This gives some idea of its strength and of Waseda's marvelous achievement. This victory came only two days before the Japanese book was published and so was not included in that book. Um, comparisons between rugby and warfare may be exaggerated, but there are many common elements and similar attributes are demanded of rugby players and soldiers. For example, courage, skill, loyalty, determination, endurance, discipline, fitness, strength, quick reactions and cool heads in the heat of battle. Kiyomiya-san reveals in this book that he knows this and the values encouraged in his teams seem to be inherited directly from the samurai tradition. Tough, noble, and in Western terms, Spartan. It is clear that Kiyomiya-san likes his op opponents to present tough challenges, both physical and mental, and is disappointed when they do not. In a sense, he is wearing two hats. As a rugby coach, of course, he wants to win, though not too easily. While as a rugby fan, he feels that the harder and more exciting the game, the better. He is absolutely right to suggest that the next decade is critical for rugby in Japan, and without exciting games, it cannot thrive or regain any of the popularity lost to rivals such as football or soccer, if you prefer, in recent times. Paucity of literature in English on Japanese rugby. Paucity means lack of literature, um, not enough literature. Despite the large and ever-growing corpus of books in Japanese about Japanese rugby by such excellent and well-informed writers as Dai Fujishima, Shinrokuro Kobayashi, Manabu Matsuse, and Koichi Murakami, to name just four, there is a lamentable dearth of books in English on the subject, no doubt because of the language barrier already mentioned. In the comprehensive 344-page bibliography, a rugby compendium, an authoritative guide to the literature of rugby union, compiled by John M. Jenkins, published by the British Library in 1998. There is just one master's thesis included, The Development of Rugby Football in Japan, 1874 to 1996, by Alison Nish, University of Sheffield, 1996, 52 pages. And two very short pamphlets about Japanese tours to the United Kingdom. And the thesis only just scraped into the book before the final whistle, as the cutoff date for inclusion was December, 1997. That is almost all there is in English, apart from the articles by the sports writer Rich Freeman, previously in the Japan Times and now in the Daily Yomuri. Uh, now he's working for Kyodo uh, News, which offer useful insight and information on a regular basis, both in the printed newspapers and online. Additional information is provided in the JRFU English pages, web pages by Ian McDonald's newsletter, uh, Alas No More, and the English Wikipedia. As a concerned observer, the translator has also provided an intermittent blog with news and views of Japanese rugby since August 19th, 1996. Again, that is no more. I've retired anyways. Um, concluding remarks on rugby and life. I have been privileged to learn a great deal in the process of translating this book, not only thanks to the opportunity for discovering new and unfamiliar words and phrases in the Japanese language, but also about rugby coaching, man management, and in a wider sense, how to live and contribute po positively to the global society, which has become an increasingly dominant reality in so many of our lives, due chiefly to the internet and cheaper air travel. As John Gorstad, founder of the now defunct Sports Pages bookshop of Charing Cross Road in London, allegedly said, the best sports books are as much about life as about sport. Mr. Kiyomir's book undoubtedly passes this test with flying colors. The inexplicable and callous murder of the Japanese diplomats, Katsuhiko Oku, 1958 to 2003, and Masamori Inoue, 1973 to 2003, and their Iraqi driver, is the shocking and deeply distressing event with which this compelling story begins. It has been turned to great benefit in the long term by the creation of the Oku Inoue Fund for the Children of Iraq, an initiative spearheaded by Mr. Kiyomiya, 
who already before that had shown the leadership and drive necessary to create the NPO, nonprofit organization, called Wasada Club, that's in capital letters, to encourage children in Tokyo to take up various sports, see chapter four. There are echoes of US President John F. Kennedy's great exhortation, itself a rousing slogan, at his 1961 inaugural address. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country in these pages. It should also be remembered that the Peace Corps was created by Kennedy and in the longer term, the underutilized soft power approach it symbolizes may well be a far more effective tool in the struggle. I much prefer this word to war with the worldwide disaffection, which is conveniently, but not always appropriately labeled terrorism than all or any of the Pentagon's armed forces. Japan has no tr long tradition of international charities or of charitable foundations in the sense that have existed in Britain, at least since the Charitable Uses Act of 1601 and in other Western countries. The international dimension was of course impossible throughout the Edo era, 1600 to 1868, when the country was completely isolated from the rest of the world. The Meiji era, 1868 to 1912, saw the founding in 1877 of Japan's first charity, the Haku Aisha by Count Sunetami Sano, 1822 to 1902, of the Saga clan in Kyushu. It was the forerunner of the Japan Red Cross Society, created in 1886, when the Japanese government signed the Geneva Convention. The former organization's purpose was to care for the dead and wounded on both sides of the Satsuma Rebellion, the Seinan Senso of 1877, and it enjoyed the support of the imperial family from its, from its inception. Historically, the nature of Japanese religions may have played a part in not encouraging the development of more charities. The indigenous Shinto religion began as a form of animism, and while it stresses purity, it is not essentially an ethics-based religion. Buddhism, imported from China, India via China, preaches compassion and self-denial, but generally expects financial support from believers and does not have the missionary spirit associated with Western Christianity, based on which many organized charities have flourished at home and overseas. Another factor might be the length of tax might be the lack of tax incentives for charities, such as are often provided in Western countries, but I claim no expertise in this area. The Oku Inoue Fund is in any case a major step forward. It encouragingly signals a new willingness of private individuals and nonprofit organizations, NPOs in Japan in the 21st century to engage with, befriend and provide assistance to the less fortunate in other countries. And it is an admirable initiative deserving of international support. It also shows the kind of originality of which Katsuhiko Oku, posthumously promoted to the rank of ambassador by the Japanese foreign ministry, would surely have approved, as it is carrying on the work of outreach which he himself began. Continuity is a vital ingredient in life as in rugby. It was ambassador Oku, his character and ideal shaped profoundly by the game of rugby, who wrote so movingly in one of his letters in Japanese from Iraq, Iraku Dayori, which are preserved on the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. There is hope. We can find it in the brightly shining eyes of the children. Finally, I wish to renew my thanks to Kiyo Miyasan, and as a rugby fan, I greatly look forward to watching all of his teams in action in both the near and the distant future. I also wish him every success in his chosen endeavors both the revival of the fortunes of Japanese rugby and international charity work. These are massive tasks, but he deserves to continue to succeed in them because like his much loved and sorely missed senior Okusan, he puts everything he has, his heart, soul, passion, and boundless energy into all that he undertakes. He has indeed learned a great deal from his senior senpai, as he states in this book, and he clearly loves rugby and his work, leading a large staff and as a good coach manager or leader commander, if you prefer, should getting the best from them and his players. It is not hard to see why Kiyomiya-san is the focus of so much of the sports media, media's attention in Japan. And there's no point in his light being hidden any longer under a bushel as far as the international rugby media is concerned. Now the game has just begun and the clock on the scoreboard is ticking the seconds away. It promises to be an exciting encounter, tough, fast and furious. Kiyomiya has received the ball from Oku and is charging forward, holding it firmly with both hands. 
There may be there may well be a few setbacks for the team as well as joyful moments. But at the end, there is indeed hope of nothing less than an overwhelming victory. The famous slogan rings out loud and clear across the field and surges through the waves of passionate supporters waiting quietly in the packed stands for some extraordinary thrilling events to unfold. Ultimate crush. Ian Ruxton, Kita Kyushu, August 2006. Well, I would just like to say at this point that I'm very sad and sorry that um, Kyumiya san is no longer, as it appears, involved in Japanese rugby at the top level or indeed the JRFU. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. Um, he was a, um, a vice president, I think, of the JRFU. Um, but obviously there were some disagreements and uh, uh, there was a parting of the ways, which is... I think it's unfortunate, uh, if you want my personal opinion. Okay, then. Um, you probably didn't want my personal opinion, but I've just given it. So, um, carrying on with reading. Notes. One, footnotes, none of which were in the original Japanese work, have been added by the translator. These are mainly intended to give explanations of Japanese cultural matters. Two, Japanese names in the text are given in the Western style, family names second. Three, the Oku Inoue Fund for Empowering Children is explained in detail in English at uh, well, a web, web address here. Um, it's on the web anyway. Donations great and small are welcomed and gratefully received. I presume it still exists. Um, other books by the translator. Well, I've translated from Japanese uh, a book about Japanese students at Cambridge University in the Meiji era by Noboru Koyama. Um, published by Lulu Press in 2004. Um, and then I refer to my books about Sir Ernest Sato, which uh, are amply introduced on this channel in other videos. So I won't talk more about that. Okay, the next is a profile of uh, Kiyomiya san, Katsuyuki Kiyomiya. Born in Osaka Prefecture in 1967, he began to play rugby at Osaka Prefectural Mata High School, Moto Kensan Renma, devoted study and training. He was a regular from his first year and played at number eight from his second. In his third year, the team appeared in the National High School Tournament at Hanazono, Osaka, and reached the third round. He was also selected to play for the Japan High School's 15 and captained the team. I think he was selected uh, by Haruguchi-san, who later became his rival as a coach, uh, if I'm right. I think I'm right. In 1986, he was um, admitted to Waseda University and was a regular member of the team from his freshman year. In his second year, the team defeated Toshiba Fuchu, forerunner of Toshiba Brave Lupus, to become All Japan champions. In January 1990, he became the team captain and the team won the university championship. On graduation, he entered the Suntory Beverage Company and played flanker. In 2001, he retired from playing and was appointed coach of Waseda University Rugby Football Club on secondment from Suntory. In December of that year, he led the team to its first Kanto University's League Championship for 11 years and was unbeaten in the league. In January 2003, his team achieved Waseda's first university championship in 13 years. In 2005, they achieved the historic first of five successive unbeaten years as Kanto University's league champion. In 2005 and 2006, they won back-to-back -back university championships. His excellent theories of rugby and charismatic leadership caused him to be appointed Waseda's coach for five years, which was an unprecedentedly long time, and many fans wanted him to continue even longer in that role. He represents the Oku Inoue Fund for the Children of Iraq and is a senior director of the Waseda Club, both of which he founded. He also wrote the bestseller Araburu Fukatsu, published in 2002 by Kodansha. Araburu is the song uh, which Wasada players sing after they have won the championship. They can only sing it at that time. I think Araburu means rough winds or something. Um, and Fukatsu means a restoration. So restoration of Araburu means a restoration of championship winning. In March 2006, a new chapter began when he left the Suntory company to become the full-time professional coach of Suntory Sun Goliath in the top league. The story continues. 
Uh, then we've got the contents. Um, I'm not going to read them all in detail, but uh, you've got a preface, the slogan left by Katsuhiko Oku. Chapter one is the rudiments of coaching. Chapter two, victory theory. Chapter three, ultimate crush. Chapter four, aiming for the top league. Chapter five, what it takes to be a coach. Chapter six, challenging the world. Chapter seven, the timeless appeal of Waseda rugby. And then postscript, the boys were fantastic. And then two appendices, which I have added. Appendix one, Waseda Rugby Football Club results under the coaching of Katsuyuki Kiyomiya, 2001 to 2006. And appendix two, a chronology of Waseda University Rugby Football Club. So um, next is the preface, uh, which is page one. And I think I will read the preface uh, to give you an idea of Kiyomiya-san's writing. On November 29th, sorry, preface, the slogan left by Katsuhiko Oku. On November 29th, 2003, at 6 a.m., the phone rang at my house. It was a call from a Waseda University junior of mine working for a media organization. Hey, what's up? This is pretty early. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but Mr. Oku has apparently died in Iraq. What did you say? I switched on the TV right away and was stunned by what I saw and heard. It was reported that in the Tikrit region of northern Iraq, a four-wheel drive vehicle belonging to the Japanese embassy in Iraq had been attacked, and Katsuhiko Oku, counselor of the Embassy of Japan in the United Kingdom, and Masamori Inoue, third secretary of the Embassy of Japan in Iraq, had died. According to local police reports, the embassy vehicle had been traveling in the right side lane of a two-lane highway when the perpetrator's vehicle approached it in the left side lane and 25 shots were fired from an automatic rifle. The embassy vehicle rolled over into a field by the roadside and stopped, and the vehicle of the attackers sped away. My wife turned pale and rushed out of the room. What on earth is going on? She yelled. My three-year-old three son also got up. Daddy, why are you crying? He asked, clinging firmly to my legs. Tormented by the sensation of losing power from my entire body, the only thing I could do was to rouse my spirits. After that, I got in touch with the relevant people and arrived at Waseda University's Kami Gusa ground at about 11 a.m. There was already a TV camera waiting there and an interview was conducted with me on the spot. Katsuhiko Oku was like an elder brother to me. He was a former member OB in Japanese, short for old boy, of Waseda Rugby Club, one of only four or five people who figured large in my private life. He was one of those important people in my life. That is what I said to the television interviewer. The newspaper reports on the next day all described Oku as having been a former Waseda University rugby player, despite his official title, which was counselor of the Japanese embassy in Britain. Before beginning the rugby practice, I had all the 100 players of the club assemble in a room on the second floor of the gymnasium next to the training ground. About 10 of them had met Oku when they had toured England and knew him personally. Also, the fourth year students had attended a lecture given by him at Waseda's Higashi Fushimi ground when they were freshmen. They too seemed to be in deep shock at the news. I think all of you know this already, but today we lost an important person. Then as I dissolved into tears in front of the players, I began to explain the origin of the slogan, Ultimate Crush. Okusan's death was a great loss to the world of Japanese rugby, but the slogan he left us has become the flesh and blood and even the spirit and life itself of Waseda rugby. By using the slogan, we have made it our own. On Sunday, January the 8th, 2006, in the National Stadium, Kokuritsu Kyogijo, Waseda defeated Kanto Gakuin University, in the final of the university championships, thus achieving for the first time in 31 years, the longed for goal of two successive back-to-back -back championships. The score was 41-5. It was probably the first genuine example of ultimate crush, i.e. an overwhelming victory in my, first, in my five years as coach. When the team captain, Takamichi Sasaki, began a solo rendition of the Waseda school song reserved for championship victories called Araburu, I sang along without once opening my eyes. In fact, it would probably be correct to say that I could not open them. The tears which welled up to the point of overflowing in my eyes were probably caused by my decision to finish my time as Waseda Rugby's coach in 2006. 
At that time, I, still, I had still not announced my decision, but a lot of people seemed to have sensed it when they saw my tears. After singing Araburu, I ran up into the stand and thanked all the supporters in a short speech. Family, friends, and many colleagues warmly blessed Waseda's championship win. Among them, I spotted the face of Yasuaki Sakyo, who had been captain when I was first appointed coach. As I shook him by the hand, I said to him, it all started with you. If I were to ask to sum up Sakyo's team of my first year as coach in one word or phrase, that word would be spirited. At first, they rejected my appointment. When I was made coach, all the management methods changed, which must have been extremely bewildering for them. But without this challenge, it would be impossible to speak of Wasada's success. Throughout the first year, we continued to win and reached the end of the season without once looking back. It was certainly no cause for satisfaction, but our results were enough to make us runners up in the university championships. In my second year as coach, the captain was real skipper in inverted commas, Daigo Yamashita. And the team motto was run at top speed with energy, ikioi de suppashiru. In addition to developing the team, I invited the world's number one coach, Graham Henry, organized the move from Higashi Fushimi to the new ground at Kamigusa, signed a deal with Adidas and so on. There was no end to the energy and I, would never once, I was never once beaten by the students in this regard. I believe this energy, ikioi, was the principal reason why we became university champions that year for the first time in 13 years. In my third year as coach, 2003, the group led by O Tao, who uh, uh, later played for Yamaha, unfortunately did not get the desired results, but without their efforts, I am convinced that we could not have achieved the second successive championship on January the 8th, 2006. This is because it was precisely during this year that I really began to understand my coaching role. There were several reasons why the team that year was unsuccessful. These included unexpected losses, injuries to key players and a mid-season mid tour, changes of team strategy and so on. Despite these difficulties, I myself learned a great deal about how to build a team that could compete superbly. It was a year in which I studied what was essential to creating a team. The team captain in my fourth year was Seigo Moraoka. I had the impression that they used the vexations of the previous year as a springboard and that they were a mature, united and confident team. In this year, the fourth year students led the team by example and embodied all that Waseda Rugby Football Club should be. But behind the scenes, there were various differences of opinion and conflicts among the players, arguments over who should be appointed captain, club members advice to leave and so on. It was a year in which I realized once again how hard it can be to lead an organization and keep it focused on winning. Sasaki's team was my fifth and final one as coach, as I had already decided. The process of that year leading to the singing of the victory song Araburu was indeed the compilation of the fruits of those five years. About half of the previous year's regular team members had graduated and it was a team of unknown potential in many areas but it underwent a glorious transformation into the strongest team ever, in inverted commas, in the history of Waseda rugby. In the final of the previous year, I had not even sent the reserve members to the field. In the post-match interview, I commented severely that there was a great difference in ability between the 15 men on the field and the reserves. This comment served to motivate the players who grew up a lot. From the viewpoint of their individuality, it was a team which had much greater potential than that of the year before, and this potential blossomed into a championship win. In this book, I've tried to record as faithfully as possible in my own words, as a summary of my experiences as coach of West University Rugby Football Club for the last five years, what I felt and learned, and the most important things about educating people, drawing out their abilities and, and the skills needed for the process of building a team. In this book, Ultimate Crush, uh, meaning thoroughly and ruthlessly overwhelming and defeating an opponent, I will try to describe the path of the growth of Waseda Rugby Club, to which this slogan has given both life and soul. I want people to read about this team for so long in the doldrums, which has now revived and breathed new life, and the process by which it has acquired an organizational strength second to none. And in the end, if readers become aware of the limitless potential of human beings, this writer can have no greater pleasure, Katsuyuki Kiyomiya. Well, I think uh, I, sh I won't read chapter one. I may read it at another time on a different video. But anyway, 
Um, thank you very much for listening to my reading up to this point, which includes uh, the preface. Thank you again and goodbye for now. <laughs>